Good morning, Oklahoma, and welcome to Cow Calf Corner. Hope you're all underway with your holiday shopping. This week, we continue our Build Back Better replacement heifer series, actually talking about how we make better genotypes. In the last few weeks, we've talked about breeding objectives, where to apply selection pressure, and really breaking down all the components of our production system to identify what those should be. But how do we actually build better genotypes? We want to think about the performance level of our cattle relative to the basic equation that phenotype is equal to the genotype of the animals relative to the production environment they're in. We can think of that genotype as the underlying genetic potential of our cattle to achieve a level of performance. Important thing to remember, genotype has two components and they're impacted by selection and mating in different ways. First component of genotype is additive genetic merit or what we think of as breeding value. Breeding value for a specific trait, if we want to use weaning weight as an example, would be the sum total of all the additive genes impacting weaning weight in some way or another across the entire genome of the animal. We can change additive genetic potential through selection by using EPDs that are available for reproductive traits, growth traits, and carcass traits, we can improve the additive genetic merit in selected populations. The nice thing about this is a cumulative and permanent change because additive genetic merit can be transferred one generation to the next because it's based on the impact of individual genes. The other component that we get into is gene combination value or what we often refer to as the non-additive component of the genotype. A great example of this is if we make the decision to use an Angus bull on our Hereford cow herd, we are creating gene combination value, doing this specifically to get heterosis or hybrid vigor. Hybrid vigor could be thought of as the advantage of the crossbred offspring's performance over the average level of performance of the purebred parents. Or we could think about that if two purebred lines have got a certain degree of additive genetic merit, when we cross those and think about that average, think about heterosis or hybrid vigor being expressed as an additional percentage of a level of performance we would get on top of the average performance of those parents. Important thing to remember about gene combination value, it does not replace additive genetic merit, it builds off of it. So crossbreeding systems, based on mating decisions, are to impact or create hybrid vigor, among other things. So, in short, we want to build better genotypes, some take-home messages. We want to select cattle to incorporate into our production system based on outstanding genetic merit or breeding value. We can take a look at EPDs in order to do that. Mating decisions made to build gene combination value involving things like crossbreeding can be used as a big boost to us, but we want to be intentional. There needs to be deliberate decisions made to accomplish specific things in terms of making that better genotype that is going to coincide with profit potential for us long term. Next week, we'll take a look more at how we go about this relative to specific traits that we might want to improve upon in building those better genotypes. As always, Thanks for joining us this week on Cow Calf Corner.